Hey, son. Come on over here and sit down, Park. We've got to. Uh, we've got some questions and answers, uh, and that's what this video is going to be about. This monthly newsletter is going to be about questions and answers that we get, and uh, that we've sent out to the individual that asked the questions. But this is going to be for everybody. So, are you ready to do some I'm answering ready. questions here, Park? Some, I got some questions. Okay, I'll so. start it off. This is uh, this is from Terry in Mississippi. Uh, and the question is, do you make up a lot of blanks with the scalloped edges ahead of time? And how many would you get ready for your first time setting up in a cheap, junk-type flea market? Uh, well, Terry, it all depends. Uh, we'll assume that if you're going to carve signs, you're going to, whatever number of blanks that you make, you're always going to use them. But just as a rule of thumb, if I were setting up at a small flea market or craft fair, and I've got a display with, say, six or seven different styles or signs. I'd have no less than a dozen, twelve, of each of the styles that I have on the display. So you might sell all of one and only one or two of the others, but if you have a dozen of each, you'll have something to sell to each one of your customers. And specifically, uh, at least twelve. Now, we have gone out to horse shows where we made up a hundred ahead of time, but we knew that we were going to need that many because we knew exactly about how many we were going to make based on, on the events at the horse show. So that's the answer to that question, at least a dozen. How about you, Park? Okay, so I've got a question from A.C. Davis. Hi, Dave. I'm interested in purchasing your how-to video set, but I have one question beforehand. Can you give me an estimate as to how much money it will take to get a business going? Equipment plus inventory and samples. Well, a lot of that depends, AC. A lot of it depends on what you already have. Um, if, you're, if you already have some woodworking equipment, um, then you might not have to buy that much. Um, for instance, the big stuff that you're going to need, obviously you're going to need a router. You're going to need a saw, either a radial arm saw or a table saw um, to cut your shapes. Um, you're going to need a sander, a belt sander uh, and some belts. You're going to need some drill bits and, and, uh, and a drill. Uh, so that's kind of the big stuff equipment wise. So you may end up spending several hundred dollars if you don't have any of that stuff. Now, a really good tip, what I tell people to start this, if you don't have that equipment, uh, see if there's a pawn shop near you somewhere. Go in, you don't have to buy brand new tools. Go in and uh, and buy some used tools. I, we've done that many times. And I, I highly suggest that until you know you're going to be making a lot of money doing this. Uh, or maybe you're just going to do it for a hobby. You might be able to get a get a decent router uh, for 20, 30 bucks. Um, don't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars. Um, now the small stuff you're going to need are simple stuff like the square, a yardstick, pencils, uh, that kind of thing. You know, so 20, 30 bucks for that. Um, then the, the specific stuff that you're going to need from a supply standpoint, you're obviously going to need router bits. Um, and, and we use kind of, you'll see on our videos, we use kind of specialized router bits. So um, you may end up spending anywhere from uh, 50 to 100 bucks on router bits if you don't have any, uh, any of the, the four router bits that we suggest. Um, your ink. You'll, we're going to answer a question later on about why not to use paint. But uh, your ink, you're going to need that. Uh, so that could be a little pricey for you there, five, six, seven bucks a can, depending on where you get it. Um, and your layout letters, depending on how you want to do that. Now, we have layout letters we're going to talk about that are available on the website that we do now. So you may have uh, you may have 100 bucks or so in layout letters, maybe a little bit more, depending on how crazy you want to get with it. So, you know, literally on the outside, maybe you're going to be spending, if you have zero, if you have nothing, you might spend four or five hundred bucks, but you might get by with just a hundred or two hundred dollars, depending again on, on uh, where you're going to get your supplies. You're going to need some wood, so you might already have some scrap wood that you can, uh, that you can route, but you might have to go out and buy some wood too. So, um, to answer the question, anywhere from maybe a hundred bucks to, you know, 500 bucks, you should be able to get things started and have, have what you need. Good answer. Good answer. You're up, Dad. Okay. Uh, th this one is from uh, Glenn. And he said, uh, hey guys, I saw in your video that you use a profile bit. Where can I get one from a local source that will work? Also, I'm a little confused as to when you use a profile bit. 
<coughs> when you use the B-Groove bit. Well, <coughs> the Profile bit is a special router bit that I grind. I buy an Amana bit and I grind it for profiling. And that profiling means that I'm using it for outset letters and for fine detail on graphics. And it's, uh, it's an Amana bit that, come, that I grind down to a point on my diamond wheel. Unfortunately, you can't buy those. It's not a standard item that you can buy. But they're available on our website. Uh, I, I grind them up for my customers, so they're available for you. Now, the V-groove bits, we use two kinds. We use a 90 degree and a 60 degree. And those are used for inset letters. That is, the small inset letters. And they're also used for the background cleanup. When you've got your letters profiled and you're doing the cleanup around the letters. Both the V-Groove bits can be used for both of those. Large inset letters, small inset letters, and the background cleanup. Uh, the different techniques for using those are shown on some of our other YouTube videos. So be sure that you, uh, that you watch everything that we put on in our monthly newsletters. Be sure you go over those so you can see all that stuff. Okay. Okay. So this will probably be our last question because we're running out of time. So, um, from Mike and Jane Jones. Um, Dave, I'm thinking about purchasing your sign making videos. How long does it take to pick up the skill for the average person? I enjoy working with wood and do a lot of scroll sign. Uh, also, can you uh, still make the kind of money routing signs displayed um, that when you're displaying them in arts and crafts shows? So, uh, the first part of the question, how long does it take to really get good at this? Um, I think for the average person, you're looking at maybe somewhere around 10 hours, um, maybe a, a little bit more, depending on your experience of what you do. Now, Mike and Jane obviously have some woodworking experience, so it might not take them long, as long. Also, uh, depending on whether you're you know, God gifted artistically, it may not take you near as long as it did me because I have no artistic ability at all. But I'm pretty good at following a line once I got the line on the board. So, um, you know, a lot, there's a lot of variables there. Um, but a lot of it has to do with experience and, um, you know, and your ability to, to pick it up and the feel of the router in your hand. So I guess to answer that question simply is uh, we generally find about 10 hours to 40 hours depending on how fast you pick it up. But I'd say the average person 10, 15, 20 hours, you should be able to carve a decent sign once you've had that router in your hand for anywhere between 10, 15, 20 hours. Okay, second part of it, is there still money to be made? Uh, that kind of money that we talk about on the videos, is there still that kind of money? Uh, no, it's a lot more. <laughs> I, my little operation in Oatman, uh, there's many, many days um, where I do, you know, three or four hundred dollars a day. That's not really that unusual. So on slow days, maybe you're only going to do a hundred bucks. But uh, but on good days, when you got a good crowd, depending on where you're at, um, if you've got the foot traffic and you keep that router running, like I've suggested before, uh, it's not unusual to do four or five hundred bucks a day, um, and that that's not bad. Let me let me break in here and say too that we're talking now about a retail operation like we have at Oatman, you can see in our newsletters. But a lot of your business, if you set it up the way that we set ours up in the beginning, is a lot of our business came from dealers. And uh, you can do the same thing, uh, you can, you know, you can amount, as far as your daily volume, you can do the same amount through dealers if you don't have a retail uh, retail setup. So that's just something to remember. Well, and then there's always online sales. There's eBay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into we'll yeah. get into that a little bit more. Anyway, we are running out of yeah, time, we're guys. Out of I got to shut the camera off, otherwise YouTube's going to shut us off. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time.